going everyone? It's Clay. I'm out dead sticking at Fort Phantom trying to catch some hybrids. It's actually been a really good trip. I finally got them uh, a pretty good school going on right now. Uh, and I wanted to share with you some tips. Uh, I've been fishing for hybrids about three or four years now. Uh, probably more like two or three years, honestly. Uh, in wintertime, I've never figured out what to do. Uh, until this year, I had a friend kind of throw me a bone. And uh, it has made a big difference. At least I'm catching fish. Sometimes I do real well. Sometimes I do just decent. Uh, but I wanted to share with you some tips on what I'm doing to find these fish. Uh, this lake is full of bait fish and it is, uh, for the last few years, I have had just no idea what to do in winter time, uh, because there's so much bait for miles. All it is is thick bait schools. You can't tell the bait from the game fish hardly with the 2D and down imaging while you're driving. Uh, very, very difficult to, to see what you're, understand what you're looking at. Uh, so what I started using is side imaging. And it'll actually filter through all that and I can see the big hard returns. And there's a hybrid right on cue. Uh, I use side imaging and I'll, I'll see a bunch of bait. Then I'll just see a couple of bigger, harder returns above them or possibly isolated from them because the shad don't want to be eaten. Uh, here we go. Got a nice hybrid on. There we go. <laughs> nice one uh but these on side imaging you'll see a bunch of bait fish and then you'll just see a few isolated members a uh, few isolated bigger returns and i want to show you some examples of what i'm what that looks like on sonar but there's a beautiful hybrid that's a decent one for out here uh that's actually not a very big one for out here but it's a nice keeper i'm gonna let him go uh but I'm looking at side imaging. I'm looking for the few bigger fish. It's not very impressive usually on the graph, uh, but it's enough to just show you that there's a, a couple of big hybrids in the area and you stop and you start fishing and you never know what'll happen. Sometimes there'll be a big school that'll start congregating under your boat and you just happen to see a couple of them on your graph. Uh, while other times you may stop and you don't catch anything. So just, it's hard to know, but I use spot lock and uh, once I find those fish, I use spot lock and then uh, I start thumping. And this is the first, uh, honestly, thumping during the summer has not been that effective for me at this lake. I know it works at other lakes. As you can hear the thumpers going right now in the background. Uh, but thump, thumping has been a huge uh, help in wintertime. I, and I don't know why it's making a difference in winter and not so much in the summer. Uh, but right now I can tell you it is making a difference. So you may want to look at my thumper video and uh, think about how you may want to build one. You could get some steel tail boots and just start hitting the side of the boat. Uh, but thumping's making a big difference. What you want to do is find these fish. And right now it seems uh, on Tetz's fishing forum, I've seen some people at Cedar Creek Lake and they said they were catching them 18 to 23, 24 feet deep out in 30 40 foot of water and uh, that's the same for this lake here and right now it's uh it's late december and uh and that seems to be the pattern they seem to be in uh, 18 to 25 feet deep uh out in 30 40 foot of water or, or deeper even uh right now i'm sitting in 32 foot and i'm dropping my baits down on the graph i'll watch them descend into the water i'll use 2d sonar and i'll watch my baits go down and usually i'm fishing the bottom bait around uh, 23 the 24 25 feet deep and uh, the top baits two to three feet above it uh, and honestly i've rarely caught fish uh, on the top hook i'm catching them on the bottom hook uh, for whatever reason i have no idea there may not not be a rhyme or reason other than it's just deeper but you, what you want to do is dead stick and i'm literally just holding these rods dead still and the waves are giving it a little bit of play, but today there's not any waves. It's actually a pretty still day. So every uh, maybe 10 seconds, I'm just barely bouncing it. And I'm talking about very gentle, like a crappie fisherman. And I'm just going down and raising back up. And it's just enough to make those flukes kind of dance in the water a little bit, but you don't need to be doing stuff like this out here, uh, bouncing it, jerking it. It's, I don't think it makes any difference. I don't think you're gonna catch fish doing that. So I'm just holding it dead still, and then I just give it a little bit of play if it's not windy. If it is windy and wavy, there's no sense to even bounce and just let the waves do the work. Less is more in wintertime, it seems. But anyway, check out the video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, several screenshots uh, of what I saw. 
a lot of them will be what I saw that made me stop. And then I may show it, if you looked at, at the speed, I'll be going two or three miles or four miles per hour. And then uh, when I stop, you may see it where it says like zero miles per hour or 0.2 miles per hour because I'm spot locked and it shows up just totally different once you're spot locked. So, uh, so kind of enjoy the screenshots. I hope you have a good winter and I hope you start catching fish. I'm sitting on a few fish here, so I'll probably get another bite here in a minute. But enjoy the video. I hope you all have a good uh, rest of the year and happy fishing to you. So I'm out dead sticking right now. When you're dead sticking, uh, you really want to hold your rods. This, These big hybrids, even a 10, 12 pound hybrid may feel like a crappie hit the end of your line. They're usually not very aggressive uh, from what I can tell. It'll feel like a crappie and you got to set that hook immediately. Otherwise you're likely to not catch the fish. Uh, so whenever you are de uh, dead sticking, I recommend holding your rods in your hands. I'd start off with one rod uh, until you get comfortable doing it. And then you can go to two all right so we got one we're sitting on several of them I'm using big flukes. I fish a very dirty lake. So I like big flukes. Uh, this is a seven inch zoom fluke and it's tied to a one ounce uh, jig head. And uh, this, it felt a little harder than a crappie hit when he hit, but I had one just a second ago that felt less than when a crappie hits. It was just unbelievable. So when you're trying to go fish for white bass or hybrids or stripers, they tend to go up creek channels and up river channels. Uh, for the urge to spawn. Hybrids uh, don't spawn, but they'll still usually mimic that uh, that motion. The best I understand them is they'll try to go up rivers if the river's deep enough. Here at my lake, the creek channel is about 10, 15 feet deep, maybe. Uh, and it has no flowing water, so I don't believe that any fish are going up the creek, and I'm finding them in the main lake areas. Uh, but if you are on a reservoir with uh, some deep rivers or creeks that are flowing into the lake, uh, say 20 plus feet or deeper, uh, you may want to try to uh, check out if the fish are up in those river channels uh, this winter time. As I'm driving around looking for hybrids on sonar, I'm using my side imaging right now in the winter time. Uh, mainly there's just so much bait that it's hard to decipher where the hybrids are. If you're looking at 2D sonar, there's just way too much information. Uh, so what a friend showed me is I use side imaging and, uh, and basically he'll look for the shad that are balled up and then you'll see a bigger harder return and that's the a hybrid picking at the shad sometimes you'll just see a big thick layer of shad and then they just kind of slowly scatter out and you'll see some big uh, hybrids uh, mixed in there kind of where they're thinned out because the hybrids are picking at it so therefore the the shad are swimming away from them uh, but there's times today in particular where the shad's real thick and i'll just see a few hard returns kind of mixed in either above it or below it or in it and uh, I'll just stop and give it a try and it's actually worked out real well uh, but in in the past trips uh, I've been looking for the shad to thin out uh, and that's usually a good sign that the hybrids are actively feeding uh, but so far those are just some things to keep in mind look for the shad kind of take note are they balled up or are they thinned out that could be a sign that something's picking at them but just because you mark some hybrids in the middle of a big thick school doesn't mean you're not going to catch them either because they can be active uh, as today, most of the fish I've been catching are actually in the middle of a thick school of shad uh, and I just drop my bait down and uh, sure enough, uh, they'll start schooling up and I'll catch them. So anyway, just a few tips and tricks. I hope that helps you. Because I'm using side imaging to slice the water in half because uh, on 2D, it's just so thick with shad that I can't tell where the hybrids are. It's just too much to look at. So what I'm simply doing is using side imaging with a very short uh, distance left and right, just enough to hit the water column in half and then see a little bit of uh, land. So if a, if a big fish is there, it can show me its shadow, its sonar shadow. That can uh, indicate that it's a big fish too. And I may not see the, the white return, but I may see its shadow down there. So anyway, I'm just using about 40 to 50 foot uh, range on my side imaging, even though I'm in 30 foot, 20, 30, 40 foot. 
and it's just simply cutting the water column in half so I can better evaluate what's under the boat and uh, where I should be fishing.